Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the Mallet Aspartate Shuttle System. As the name suggests, it's again a shuttle system which would shuttle Mallet and Aspartate across the mitochondrial membrane. But let's put this phenomena in a physiological context to understand the necessity of this kind of shuttle system and how this shuttle, shuttle system actually operates at a molecular level. So we know that glycolysis pathway takes place in the cytoplasm where glucose is converted to several intermediate and then ultimately it gives rise to pyruvate as the end product. Now apart from pyruvate, NADH is produced and some amount of ATP is produced as well. The pyruvate would be immediately channeled inside mitochondria which can be used to produce acetyl-CoA and thereby it would go to the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. And the NADH which is produced in the glycolysis pathway can be channeled into the electron transport chain to generate ATP. But there is a fundamental problem. The NADH which is generated in the cytoplasm by the process of glycolysis cannot enter cannot enter the mitochondria because the mitochondrial inner membrane is totally impermeable to NADH. As a result, an alternative pathway is required. It turns out there are shuttle systems which are important for transporting NADH into the mitochondrial matrix such that it can enter the electron transport chain and can generate ATP. So let's see how the mallet aspartate shuttle works. Now we understand the context of it. So the key transporters of mallet aspartate shuttle are mallet alpha ketoglutarate antiporter and glutamate aspartate antiporter. All these names suggest these are antiporters. That means the transport direction is different for two solutes. One would be moving out, one probably would move in. Move in. So let's look at that. So in the cytosol, the glycolysis pathway would produce NADH. The NADH would be now converted to a form which can pass through these transporters. As it's a mallet alpha ketoglutarate transporter, NADH would be used to generate a mallet. Now in the cytoplasm, there is quite a lot of oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate would be converted to the mallet with the help of enzyme mallet dehydrogenase. Now, NADH would be utilized by that enzyme to convert NAD. So, the energy in the NADH is actually converted in format of mallet. Now, mallet would be transported into the mitochondrial matrix via mallet alpha ketoglutarate antiporter, and mallet would be now inside the mitochondrial matrix. But still, it does not give rise to NADH at this point. And NADH is the form which could be utilized in electron transport chain. So, mallet is converted back to alpha, uh, oxaloacetate with the help of mallet dehydrogenase. And the mallet dehydrogenase enzyme can work in a bidirectional fashion. And the forward and reverse reaction both are feasible. So, the mallet and oxaloacetate are interchangeable in forward and reverse direction. And when it converts mallet to oxaloacetate, it also regenerates NADH which could be used in electron transport chain. But the other component of the mallet alpha ketoglutarate antiporter is alpha ketoglutarate. So as it's an antiporter, alpha ketoglutarate which is present in the mitochondrial matrix would be transported out to the cytosol. Now let's see how alpha ketoglutarate comes back. So alpha ketoglutarate would eventually be converted into glutamate. And in format of glutamate, it can come back into the mitochondria via the glutamate aspartate antiporter. So alpha ketoglutarate and glut glutamate are also interconvertible. Now the oxaloacetate which was produced from mallet would be converted to actually aspartate. Now aspartate can move out via the glutamate aspartate antiporter. And oxaloacetate is converted into aspartate by the 
reaction of transamination, right? And now aspartate can move out into the cytosol. And on the reverse process, glutamate can come in. Now, the oxaloacetate which is produced in this process to regenerate NADH, it can either give rise to aspartate or it can go to the TCA cycle to generate more energy. However, the key event was to regenerate NADH which was not present in the mitochondria. Now, NADH would give its electron and the electron would move along the electron transport chain which would be accepted by a terminal acceptor and ultimately it would pump hell lot of a proton into the mitochondrial intermembrane space and using that proton gradient a lot of ener energy in terms of ATP would be generated. So the key goal was to generate ATP and in order to generate ATP via electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation you need NADH. NADH is generated in the glycolysis but cannot enter the mitochondria because the, in, in the inner membrane is impermeable. So the overall mallet aspartate shuttle is a trick which mitochondria use to transport NADH from cytosol into the mitochondria such that it can utilize in electron transport chain. So that was all about this uh, mallet aspartate shuttle. I hope this video was easy and understandable. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.